could post the uh, post the link again. I went live again. I just had to go do something. Thank you. Y'all know what it is, though, man. Get your money up. Stop trying to. Nobody should be broke during 2023. Even though times are hard, you know. I won't say nobody should be broke, but I just feel like it's just so easy to get money today. Like, a six figures is something like you can make with your eyes closed in, the, in this new age. All you got to do is do a little studying. Man, like, I tell people all the time, man, like, no matter what, if you want money, all you got to do is literally consistently learn, like, just be a, a subject matter expert at something. I tell anybody, though, IT, I like that IT becoming popular, but I never knew it would become a trend, but IT was the first thing I was going to turn to. That's the easiest way to six figures. Government contracting, IT, truck driving, like, no matter what, I was going to figure out a way to get a little money. All I needed was like a 50 piece, a hundred racks. And I was going to run and I was going to start a business with that. That's really all you need to save, folks. Focus on getting a 50 to a hundred racks and, and invest in something. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's really all somebody need to become a millionaire. I'm just being technical. Save you a 50, a hundred piece, leverage that motherfucker. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about cash, though. Save up you a 50 to a hundred. And you golden from that point. You just got to figure out how to use that motherfucker to your advantage. Invest in it. Re and making sure that motherfucker return the profits. You know what I'm saying? If I had to tell anybody any type of knowledge, then that would be it. Save up 50 to 100. And you'll figure. And it'll naturally flow from there. Somebody like a million. We trying to reach billions. Everybody ain't going to be a billionaire. But bill billions is hard to get. Even, even I'm saying that as a millionaire. It takes a lot to get a billion. Stuff that I'm not even prepared for. It takes knowing the tax system. Like all of you think billion is easy, is really not. You gotta have, for one, you can't make a billion without the people. So you need supply and demand. You need, a de you need to supply the demand for something. Either you gotta create demand or something, but you gotta create it on such a large scale that you're going to need a lot more than just you you're going to for one need to go viral like so no no brand took off without going viral coca-cola is viral pepsi is viral motherfucking you name certain brands that are viral so always remember that too you can't really make a meal if, if your shit don't go viral or go viral to the right people so even if it's viral to a bunch of billionaires and rich people the fact that you're on their radar is good you got to go viral to a certain group so let's just say you want to get rich from selling oil. Well, for one, you got to have a supply. Now you got to go find the demand and the buyers for that supply. You get what I'm saying? So when you're selling something, that's the whole goal and game is to target the right people and, and, and create a demand or find a problem, sell the solution. You feel me? So that's all you got to do. Man, it's like you on live at the perfect moment. This is just what I need to hear. Big facts, bro. You good. So, it's like just like the trap, bro. That's for real, bro. All you need is 50 to 100. How would you invest? And the easiest way to save a 50 to 100 is to invest. It'll, it'll get there faster. It's just throwing money into a stock portfolio every week and buying stocks at a discount. You get what I'm saying? Even if you don't buy stocks and you wait on a dip, still save money in an investing account because the investing account is going to help you save quicker. But that's buying shares, though. If you're trying to save money, the quick way is buying shares, even dividends. Just getting a little return on your money, you feel me? Instead of, it'll get there quicker, but I would say the best way to do it is to buy good shares, like on, on good, profitable companies that have an economic moat and an advantage in this world. You feel me? So the, the the way I saved up my first fifty thousand, me personally, 
I'm going to tell you how I save up my first 50 to 100K. I'll tell you exactly how I got my first 50 to 100. So I was cutting hair. I was making 3000 a week, but I pocketed all of that money, right? So I decided to save 100% of my haircut money. So I was making 3000 a month, my fault, from cutting hair and 4000 from the Army. But I would live off of, like, 3000 and save four. So I was saving 4000 a month. But I had to live below my means for a year. So I was making 7K a month, but I was pocketing four racks. So it was easy for me to save up my first 50 with just cutting the hair. But that was off the strength of me and my army money. So my first 50 came quick because I also was investing my haircut money. So as I'm so you need cash flow first, and then you need to invest that cash flow. So that's all I did. I was making 7K a month. 4k a month from the army 3k a month from the uh, barber but i lived off 3k of my uh, whole money and then i saved 4k and then you gotta think after 12 months i got five, you know fifty thousand dollars so it took me a year to save 50k and i turned that 50k into millions because you gotta think this is before i even had an instagram i'm coming into instagram with some bands so now I got, as soon as I start my Instagram account, I got about a, a, a $55,000 saved up, right? So I say, so I, as I have this money saved, that's when I started to leverage it to use my brand. But I also took advantage of a time period where ads were cheap, where everything was cheap. So y'all got to understand, y'all going to have to spend a lot more money than I spent because I started in 2017. I saved my first $50,000 in 2017. So you might not get the same shit I got. You feel me? So, it's like, it took me a year to save up a 50 piece. A little bit less than that. And then I wrote up, and then I was investing my money. So, you know, I got money. I'm investing my money. So people wanted to know how the hell you run up that much money. Because you got to think, at 21, when you're the only nigga with a 50 piece, you're you're definitely noticeable. And you, you damn near rich. You got to think, hey, 21 years old in 2017, and I got 50, 60 racks on me, I could easily, people wanted to pay just to get mentored by me. People wanted to, to figure me out. I'm a young nigga with Camaros, buying my wife shit. You got to think, I was, I was young and lit. So then I wrote a book. So once I made about 50, 60,000, I write a book, and then I run up another piece. So now I got book money. So now I'm making 20K a month. Like, after like some time, I done got it to a point where I was making 20K a month. Yeah. I was, I was, I was making 7K from barbering and haircuts. Then I was making like another 5K from books and then another 5K from uh, investing a month. So I was only making about 5K a month doing that. So now I'm making 20,000 a month. Just off, off a lot of streams of income that work. All my streams of income work. The army work, haircutting work, barbering work, and the books work. I had four good streams of income that was bringing me a residual 20K a month. So you got to think, you 21 years old making 20K a month, you're easily noticeable. Everybody wanted to be around me. And I was contagious. Everybody like, Ooh, man, this nigga making, he ain't playing. Everybody, think about it. You go to your barber and your barber rich. People really looked at me like the young rich nigga, and I was only making 20K a month, right? So I'm making 20K a month, but I'm only living off 3,000 of that. See, what you dumbass niggas would do is you're going to make 20, and then you're going to try to look like you a celebrity. See, me, I stayed regular because I was in Savannah, Georgia. You, you motherfuckers, y'all make 20 a month? You're not going to get to an M because you're still not humble. I lived in a, I ain't going to lie. I live off 3K a month. That was my, that's what I spent. And I pocketed 17K a month. So you got to think, if you're a 21 year old who can pocket 17K a month, you get what I'm saying? You're going to eventually figure some shit out. So now I'm running Facebook ads. I got money, I got money to run ads. I had so much cash flow that it was easy for me to get rich. I got 17K a month coming in at 21. So, now, I'm reinvesting into ads. I'm writing better books. I'm in the army at the same time, by the way. Man, I damn near quit the army. I told them I don't even want to do this no more. I'm making too much money. Get me out. You feel me? Hold on, let me drink. They didn't want to let me out. Because they were hating on me. 
I had a lot of sergeants who was like trying to get mentored by me, but it's illegal to fraternize with soldiers. So they really couldn't hang out with me. So that was another thing. I was, I was famous in the army, but it was hard for the the uh, the subordinates to really fuck with me because it's illegal to fuck with soldiers who who lower ranking. So they was making deals with me on the low. So the reason why I was able to grow this Instagram while I was in the army was because I was a young lit nigga, and sergeants were trying to get down with me. You know, higher ups was trying to get down with me. So. They made deals with me like, hey, you don't got to come to work if you got damn, you know what I'm saying, uh, help us get money. So now I'm mentoring my bosses. Y'all don't understand what type of nigga I am. The reason why I was able to grow this, the reason why I had a million before I left the army was because I was making 17 k a month at one point in time. Then I kept reinvesting that money back into my brand. And then they let me off work because niggas was dick riding. You feel me? They was dick riding like a motherfucker. I had the 2019 Camaro and 2019 SS. That's a that was a fifty thousand dollar car, and I don't even make fifty k. Niggas knew I was balling, and then I bought my wife the 2019 Blazer. In 2019, I bought I had a hundred k worth of cars as a as a as a nigga who only make forty k a month. I mean a year. Everybody knew I was different. That's another thing. The advertisement cars always been my advertisement. When I was in the army, I had that 2019 Camaro. In 2019, go look it up. Go look up Aristotle.dgreat, and you'll see proof. You feel me? So the sergeants, they didn't, they didn't tell me to come to work, nothing. So I was working on my brand while I'm in the military, and I'm still collecting the trip. So I didn't even have to come to work. So I literally went a whole five months not coming to work and was able to work on my brand because of the deals I made helping sergeants and subordinates make money, right? So that's how I ran up a quick 100K. And then I just kept reinvesting. Every time I run up money, I reinvested. And I still living off 3K a month. Unlike you niggas, y'all, you already know what y'all to do. But see, I was spending, once I started making about 50K a month, I was, I was spending 10K a month on my brand. So this is when prices were cheap. Ads were cheap. You could pay a rapper to say something for cheap. You get what I'm saying? So... Nowadays, rappers want a whole bunch of money, and y'all gonna y'all have to spend a lot of money to grow your brand today. But back in back when I was doing it, I was doing this shit before niggas was doing it. You get what I'm saying? I'm the soldier boy of this whole brand building entrepreneurship shit. Everybody else is damn near my sons and copycat, except one guy, Chris Johnson. The rest, copycats and Wall Street trapper. There's only three guys that I know who did not, and Ian Dunlap, Wall Street, Chris Johnson, Ian Dunlap, and uh, and, and myself. Those are the only four guys I knew who was investing before 2020 and not copying my direct brand. But my style has been copied so much. Niggas smoking weed because of me. They got damn, but, they, but that's how influential I am. I ain't gonna lie. Like, at first, I used to hate that shit. But then as I got older, I'm like, okay, that shit ain't stopping me from getting money. So who cares if a nigga copy me? As long as that shit ain't, I still gotta be good at what I do. So at the end of the day, Yes, imitation can become flattered, but you can't stop it from happening. I want y'all to understand that, too. There's so many people who copy me. Like, literally, all these niggas literally copy my brand, my whole everything. Copy my lingo, my style, the way I sell things, everything. You name it. Even from the, the highest to the top, copying my shit. You feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But... It's the honest truth. But I was running that shit up, man, for a long time. I run I, I've never made less than ten thousand a month for the last the low the last time I made less than ten thousand a month was twenty seventeen. So that'll give you some perspective on, on what type of person I am. The last time I made that that small of money had to be in um twenty seventeen. So that's all you really need is some money to, to blow, and you can you can you can make some out of yourself. But if you ain't got no money to reinvest into yourself, then you'll never win. So some what y'all got to do is create cash flow. That's why I say if y'all was smart, if, if two people were smart, but people don't like this plan, you get you a girl, a couple, whether I don't care who it is, two people. Y'all need two streams of income. We live off one person's stream of income. 
and we invest the other person's income 100%. But y'all ain't ready for that conversation. Y'all ain't ready for that teamwork. Y'all niggas don't know how to lead y'all women to even do that for y'all. I would literally, I, if you a real man, you should be able to say, baby, your check coming to me and we what we going to do is we going to reinvest this money. But you got to be for real about it. You feel me? Like, I talk, I sat my wife down and said, all money goes into getting more money. That means your money included. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was making like 5K a month. My wife was only making 1K a month because she was still in college. So she worked part time. She was making a little over 1,000 a month. But I told her even that 1,000 counts. It might not be much, but that motherfucker paid the rent. And I can reinvest the other five so we can get some more money. You get what I'm saying? So that's what we did. We put all money into this shit. Even, even, the, even the money she had. You feel me? Even if it was small, it counted. And she used to get her college refunds, and, and she and we used that. She, we, my wife gave me half of her college refund check, so I can invest it, put it, put it into the stock market. This is back in 2018. So we always been on that shit. She gave me one day I came home, she had two thousand laid out on the table. Instead of me going to fuck up that 2000 on Nikes, on this and that, I threw 100% of that shit into the stock market. I'm a different breed. I was more excited about stocks than I was about Jordan. I was more excited about stocks than I was about motherfucking cars, clothes, anything. When I came home, my cousin was the one who said, nigga, you got to put that shit on. I understand you rich, but nigga, get you a Rolex. Stop wearing no cheap ass Invicta watches. I used to go to the mall and get me an $800 watch. Thought I was doing something. My cousin was like, nigga, when you get home to Atlanta, these niggas gonna laugh at you. And I was like, what? Nigga, it's an Invicta. What you talking about? And that nigga was like, bro, you not gonna be able to walk up to no nigga with an Invicta watch? And then he said, and nigga, you getting all that money, you need some, you need some drip. You need to stop bullshitting so you can grow your brand. Right? So it was my cousin who really told me to do all this spending money and brand shit because at first I was gonna live regular. My ass was cheap. My ass was like, uh-uh. I'm already making 150k a month. The fuck I'm about to go in and, 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 and spend it, spend it all on bullshit, clothes, shoes. And my cousin explained it to me. He was like, bro, you're not gonna make it if you don't show these niggas that you can spend it. And I was like, what you mean? And he was like, bro, you gotta get you a Rolex. You gotta get you some jewelry, some this and that. That that shit right there is what niggas wanna see first. And then they'll believe what you're talking about. And I was like, bro, I'm already making money. I already got clientele. He said, you'll get more. Man, that shit worked like a charm. Shout out to my cousin Jeff. Without him, I wouldn't have thought about all this shit. I'll be honest with you. That nigga the one was the one who was like, put that shit on. Get you, get you some real jewelry. Get you some all that shit. You feel me? If you are showing them signs, y'all don't deserve women that's going to help build. Oh, because men talking about some women won't do that. But nah, bro. Real shit. So, I was the first. That's the reason I put that shit on back in the day because my boy Jeff. And everybody was scared to do it. I was the first one to really do that shit, for real. Especially on the stock side. Where no stock investor having that shit on. I was the one who had that shit on. I was the one... Um, on them PJs, all that shit, for sure. The first to do the PJ, the first to, uh, to have that designer on, real shit. And then 2020 came, and niggas started getting PPP loans. And then designer took off, and I stopped wearing that shit. I haven't worn designer in two years. I haven't bought designer, like clothing. That shit is a waste of money. That's another thing, too. Young niggas, don't buy designer. Get you some real jewelry. If you're going to spend, if you're going to fuck up 50K in a year, I ain't going to lie, jewelry is an investment. Let me explain why. Because it makes niggas take you serious. A lot of you, I ain't going to lie to you. But the real one, don't go get the bullshit. A lot of you niggas be wearing them bullshit diamonds that don't do the rainbow when the light hit it. And then... Then y'all, then y'all be making it obvious that your jewelry fake because you got on five chains. Don't do that. We know you can't afford five chains. Nigga, one, one Cuban link costs 40K. 
I know you niggas didn't fuck up a, a 200k on no jewelry, and a pennant costs another 20. So that's a 60k every on your neck for every chain. You niggas ain't doing that. So that's that's another giveaway if a nigga jewelry fake. If he got too many chains on his neck, can't afford that. Trust me, I'm I know what a real Cuban costs. It costs 40 racks. Real diamonds cost cost real money. That'd be embarrassing too. You'll see a nigga walk working in a Foot Locker store with a bust down Cuban, knowing he ain't paid no 40, 20 racks for that bust down. But we'll wear, wear that shit with pride. That's another thing, folks. You ain't getting it. Don't wear the bullshit. Just leave your neck bare. Leave your neck bare. Leave your neck bare. You ain't fuck up a 20 and, and you the nigga going to the back getting my shoes. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing. Don't fake it till you make it because niggas ain't going to believe. People going to spot the bullshit. Faking it till you make it don't work. One day somebody going to call that shit out. So keep it real if you're trying to build a brand too. Keep the shit real, bro. I'm going to be honest with you because... Yeah. Real shit. That's another thing. Take off all that fake gold and all that fake jewelry. Because no, nobody, that's a that's a quick way to make people like me be like, nah, bro, whatever talking about, whatever he talking about, cap. Think about it, bro. If you're a jewelry cap, then everything that come out your mouth going to be cap. Nobody going to believe anything you say. I'm going to be honest with you. So it's best not to wear fake jewelry at all. Because when you start talking to real niggas who got paper, we know what to look for. So now we're not going to take you serious. So get yourself a real Rolex if you can afford it. Get yourself a real, and don't you don't have to buy designer. All you need is two good pieces of jewelry. And you can wear white t-shirts. You can wear this and that. So jewelry is an investment. So that when you go negotiate with high-level people, they know how to take you serious. I know that sounds weird, but it's the truth. I'm being honest with you. I know, I know it sounds fucking crazy, but it's the truth. Real shit. Get you, but you don't even need a chain. Get you a nice watch. Trust me. A watch. If you got on a, a G Shop and you trying to conduct business, ain't nobody gonna take you serious, bro. I'm be honest with you. A nigga come at me talking with a G Shop, telling me he he can help me make millions and he can do this and that. I'm not gonna take him serious. I'm be like, all right, well I'm gonna get G Shop quality work. You feel me? This nigga about the G-Shock, that's what type of G sh shit I'm going to get. G-Shock work. I want Rolex work. You feel me? Think about it. But stay down till you come up. Don't try to go. I'm talking about people who can afford it. Invest in yourself, but don't over investing yourself all you need is a good rolex them bitches called five seven k you can make payments on it fine and you need a good product perfect your product perfect your craft perfect your craft though they said 5K where? I don't know. Do you do life coaching? Oh, yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I could, but it ain't my lane. Sometimes you got to stay in your lane to make money. If I go bouncing around here, I'm a life coach. I'm a motherfucking blah. I'm a blah, I'm a blah, I'm a blah. It's going to fuck up the overall money. So you know how they say multiple streams of income help? I ain't gonna lie. Doubling down on something that work is really what you need to be doing. Even though multiple streams of income work, you got to focus on one thing at a time. And when you perfect that, then you move on. So you got to think, I can cut hair for the rest of my life. It's like riding a bike. Once a barber, always a barber. So forever I'll have that stream. I know how to do IT. I got IT credentials that I'll never lose. You can never discredit the fact that I was in the military and I got experience on IT. So that's going to always be on my resume. Then I got so many connections. 
So no matter what, I'll never go broke. But it's a you bishop are. He said more of a relaxed uh, style with an Apple Watch. I'm not judging y'all. I'm just telling you the honest truth. If you trying to come in a room with a bunch of niggas with some M's, they will judge the watch you got on. I'm not joking. I'm telling you. If you if you go, I'm not. You don't want to hear it, but people don't want to hear the truth. But it's the honest truth. Now, granted, if you like a car detailer or something. There's ways to talk to high-level people without having to do all that. If you a car detailer, they'll fuck with you. Hey, I'll detail your car. I'll pull up to your house, and I'll make sure all your cars get gas. Like, those type niggas, you know, they can network with uh, with guys pretty good. You can, you can do services for men, like, even if you're a barber. Barbers help you net, is, a, is a networking tool. Barbering, car detailing, um, what else is a way to talk to rich people without being rich? What else what else we What's what jobs will hire a nigga like cameramen, photographers? So if you want to network with rich niggas, learn a skill that rich people like doing. That's the only way some niggas get in contact with me. I went landscaping, gym coach, stuff like that. Personal trainer. Somebody said bartending. Stuff like that. See? See? Y'all got to do shit where rich people are. That's how you build up your network without having all that money. But if you, but then when you build up your network, you still got to go get that. Said first day out, bust down rollers. Fuck that. <laughs> nah, don't do that, bro. What you getting? Oh. Hold on, y'all. Let me get me a goddamn something in front of me. You give me two seconds. I'm gonna get back with you soon. Uh, excuse me. I believe all of us are. They're pretty good, you know what I'm talking about? Is it like strong purple? Um, I'm gonna have to get the salmon. Oh, nah, hell nah. They gotta get the deal pickle off that. Is that cheese on there? Yeah. Alright, let me know. Hopefully, my day, my seven day in the group goes good. Oh, yeah, it will, my brother. Trying to get that private chef job. Yeah, I'm looking for one. Alright, can I get, um,. Salmon, well done. No dill pickle sauce. Can I get that black one? They got that? Salmon, well done. Well done. Uh, black one? They got that? I can ask. And then, um, can I get the uh, grilled broccolini and the um, collard greens and the uh, potato fingerling confit, whatever that is. Nigga tried me with that deal pickle shit. You got the extra drink, right? I'll take one too, another drink. Small account channel going crazy, appreciate that. But yeah, man, I'm just giving life advice on how to come up and shit, how to never go broke. You know? I might save this live, repost it. Where do you see the market and economy going in two years? The market only goes up, my brother. I'm telling you, in the next 10, the market going to be a double by the end. Y'all got to also understand that. Y'all don't want to hold stocks for a generation. The next 10 years, stocks will double. I've been looking at stocks for the last damn near 10 years, so I know. Whoa. You guys can drink as long as you want. It's just they're done serving food. Damn. Yeah, we, we sat down. Now they got to get our last order in. 
You go tell them to just get our last one in. I tell them what tip. What tip. Tell them they gotta do that. Yeah, yeah we'll tip. Tell them what tip on my honey. Nah, tell them what tip. The what tip on my honey. Are you tripping, bro? They trying us on some bullshit. Y'all you know saying stupid ass hoe man? What the fuck you mean? Goddamn kitchen clothes. The bitch trying me, bitch. I'm sitting down eating real food. Talking about his clothes. How you gonna serve a nigga appetizer, nigga? Like the kitchen clothes. I spill all that water on the goddamn floor. They do that shit. I'm dead ass. I'm, I'm gonna get my lip back. I'm spilling this goddamn water. Something gonna get fucked up. Somebody gotta clean up something. Whoa, I slipped all the nachos on the floor. Fuck, nigga, play with me like that if you want to. Nachos will be on the floor. Since you want to disrespect me. Clean that shit up, then. All these nachos and his, and his water going on the floor. Yeah, yeah. We, I'm going to get my lip back. You play with me if they want to. I'm going to get my lip back. Yeah, yeah. He said, bro, really a regular person like us all. You damn right. Nah, I'm dead ass. Nacho going on the floor. That's cool. And they got to clean that shit up. Because I can't eat. You, you, you got to clean that shit up. You don't close the kitchen and serve a nigga appetizer. That's that disrespectful as fuck. That ain't even how you do business. That ain't how you do business. So I got a job for her. She gonna play goddamn 52 pickup. Remember that uh that game? We used to have them cards. We used to ask nigga, you wanna play 52 pickup? Then you drop the whole deck on the card on the floor. I'm like, pick that shit up. We gonna play 52 pickup. It's 52 nachos. It's probably more. It's some nachos right here. This shit going on the floor. We're going we gonna to play 52 nacho pickup. Shit, fuck it. Oh, nah, nah, nah. We're going to see. We're going to see what, how this shit play out. They gonna ban me from this restaurant. I did that in Puerto Rico. <laughs> me and Jeff went into a club and the lady said she'll give us our money back. When she'll come in the club and give us our money back. So we come out there, motherfucker. Cause that shit was lame and not and not even jumping. But it was like the day before we went. It was like some little bar. The lady didn't give us our get like our, my change back. So I spilled my fucking drink on the uh, cash register. Don't play with me, bitch. She gonna try to hide when I'm trying to leave and shit. And I'm looking for her. And they said she'll be out in 30 minutes. And then we wait 30 minutes time. She'll be out in 10. All right. I spilled my fucking drink on that cash register. Well, clean that shit up then, bitch. Since you wanna, since you wanna take my change, you gonna have to do $10 worth of labor. Since you wanna take $10 from me, $10 worth of labor then. Clean all this fucking champagne off this register. Um, the kitchen is in the middle of shutting down, but I asked them to make those dishes for you guys. The only thing they don't have is the collars. So that can be okay. That's cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yep. Yep. That save y'all from 52 pickup. They, they gonna make that food. Don't get that. Get that motherfucker $5 for even playing with us like that. I don't care if it's your third day. Bitch, you seen us sit down? What the fuck would you give us appetizers for? And then... Don't give us, uh, then be like, okay, you can't have your uh, entree because it's shutting down. Bitch, you should have came here and said the kitchen about to close. Hurry up and put your food in. Fuck that hoe. Bitch, try this. I don't know what she think this is. Nah, ain't no don't know, bitch, learn. That's common courtesy. You don't do that to people. You don't even know the fuck you speaking to, bitch. I'm the richest nigga on this rooftop. And you sitting here goddamn playing with me. I'm the richest nigga on this fucking rooftop. You feel me? Right now. So, you treating the only black people, because we the only black people in this bitch. And I, I got on the tank top and I got on shorts. But don't fucking play with me. 
You feel me? She think y'all bro, yeah, cause I ain't got on no jewelry, no shit like that. I got on a tank top and some shorts. Nah, bitch, don't play with me. Man, that shit got damn fuck, fuck my whole equilibrium up, right? Damn, bitch, my food ain't coming. Then I went grocery shopping at first. I was just going to Target and I was like, baby, let's stop by this rooftop bar. I was just going to Target, but I really wanted some good food, you feel me? That shit crazy, man. Can you come by and talk to us? Yeah, but this is my thing though. Know, like, if you knew the kitchen was closing, why why you ain't coming uh, tell us to put in the hey, order? I assume that they told you at the front that post desk. Nah, they ain't they ain't tell us that. Cause that ain't that ain't good uh business if somebody gonna close it, give us our appetizers. And then say the kitchen closed. You get what I'm saying? That ain't what we do. Don't we can't you can't assume that. You feel me? Come on, someone. She assume that's our meal. I'm assuming. I was assuming that was your meal. What you think we broke? Bitch, just because you broke don't mean we broke. Just because we black and you fucking broke, bitch. I came here and got two drinks and some appetizers. Don't put that broke shit on me. I thought that was your meal. Bitch, I only ordered nachos and some fucking chicken bites. What the fuck I look like? He said, yeah, they gonna throw that salmon on the floor. I don't give a damn. Yeah, don't play with me like that, bro. That's, that's stupid as hell, bro. Don't disrespect me like that. Y'all want anything else? He said, you and the wife beater at a rooftop restaurant. I don't give a damn what I got on. If I was white, I could wear it. Don't stick. That's you stereotyping me saying, oh, you got on a white beater. If I was a white man in his white beater, I would get served how I'm supposed to get served. When you when you fucking black, I don't give a fuck what I got on. Either treat me right or you get checked. Everybody gets checked. No no man goes unchecked. I checked some powerful niggas before who, you, who didn't think they can get checked because they ain't never seen a young nigga with some money. He called me arrogant and I said, well, guess what? I'm not arrogant. You, you older niggas just threatened by me. Because y'all can't little boy me on influence and money. Y'all used to holding shit over young niggas' heads. Oh, nah, bro, if you don't do this, and we gonna make sure you don't get on this platform. Make sure you don't get on that platform. You know what I told him? Y'all can't little boy me on that. Y'all don't decide who buy from me. The customers buy from me. So that's what these motherfuckers hate. When they can't tell people not to rock with you because your business model ain't, ain't based on who stamp you. So they gotta, so they forced to come correct with me. Cause you can't use that whole thing like these other entrepreneur nigga be depending on them to give them opportunities and shit. I don't need that. So I talk my shit. If you disrespect me or don't do the or do the proper work, you will get checked. I don't I don't care about who no names. I don't give a fuck if you Tyler Perry or Obama. You will get checked. You feel me? Everybody, no man goes unchecked, no person goes unchecked. You feel me? They use they so used to little boy and young niggas. They so used to us needing them and holding shit over our head, holding carrots over our head, saying, if you don't do this, then we ain't going to let you do have this opportunity. If you don't do this, then blah, blah, blah. That ain't me. Real, real paper, real bullshit. You feel me? I don't allow people to do that to me. Everyone can get, everyone gets shit. You feel me? Because if you don't check people, this is what I learned, bro. This is what I learned. If you let a man slap your head once, he'll slap it again. 
that's how you get bullied so never ever this is another thing it never ever leave nobody unchecked because you, that's, that's how you get bullied motherfucker gonna slap your head and when they get away with it they're gonna slap your head again and now the next day they're gonna slap your fucking head again so i don't allow no nigga to slap my head once i'm checking you the first time no nope, i'm gonna slap your ass right back because because if not i'm gonna get bullied you feel me that's how that's how bullying happens when you let people play with you one time you got one time to play with me that's how i feel and that's how everybody should feel are you gonna get bullied They said niggas ain't what they portray in real life. Nah, for sure. But that's the honest truth, though. Like, so, so like, if, if your boss disrespects you, check him that day. Say, nah, you know how your boss say some disrespect? You go to a job, and it's been your first week, and your boss say some, nah. Set the tone with every relationship. I do that all the time. I set the tone. Nope, not about to disrespect me, because somebody going to think they can get away with that for life. You probably don't even want to drink that, huh? Right. They low key jamming. Hell yeah, they jamming. Never let a man put his hands on your shoulder when talking to you. It's it's demeaning. It's a sign language meant to reduce you. Yeah, I hate that shit, bro. I hate when motherfuckers touch me. Like, nigga, don't touch my motherfucking waist, nigga, don't. Like, I, I, I be knocking niggas' hands off my waist. Like, nigga, I ain't no girl. We'll take a picture and nigga put his hands on my waist like I'm a bitch. Nigga, don't play with me like that, bro. I'm not no fucking girl. Slap that nigga hand off my motherfucking back. What the hell wrong with you, bro? I'm not no, I'm not one of these out of town Atlanta niggas. I'm really from the A, bro. I, I don't do that. Don't, don't put your hand on me. Don't motherfucking... Not them trying to do that. Yeah, that shit be pissing me off, boy. I ain't gonna lie. I be weirded out when men tell me they love me. Like, when I was at Invest Fest, motherfuckers just kept walking up to me saying, I love you. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was weirded out. But my cousin had to explain to me once again, like, bro, you change people's lives. So niggas gonna walk up to you and say that. And I was like, bro, I'm sorry. But I ain't gonna lie. I was pissed off for, like, 20 minutes, I'm like, bro, four niggas that came up to me and said they love me, bro. What the fuck going on? I'm all confused and shit in the club. I'm like, bro, these niggas that came up talking about they love me. Like, what the fuck wrong with these niggas, man? And he was like, uh, bro, people, you change people's lives, they gonna do that. And I had to come to my senses like, oh, okay, because I was I was on some shit like, bro, don't play with me like that, bro. Like, nigga, love me and I kill for you. Like, those words, bro, mean something to me. If you gonna say that to a man, you gotta let your life down for that person, bro. So I don't, I don't use that word lightly. And I feel like niggas just be blurting that shit out. You feel me? Like, oh, I love you. Nah, bro. Like, if I tell a nigga I love him, I kill for him. I, I really, I really like be upset if something happened to them. It's different. I feel protection over this person. If I tell you I love you, bro, like I really, you get what I'm saying? Like I love you for real. Don't just throw them words out. That shit is a strong word. Words have power. But people just use it lightly these days. And that, that be on them. But I don't love no nigga on Instagram. I'm sorry. I got to know somebody. I got to know somebody, bro. Real shit. I really got to know you. You feel me? He said, niggas might drop something for you. You never know. You right, though. But at the end of the day, he going to snitch. Because you done seen what happened. With this whole YSL shit, so I don't even get into the streets, bro. I'm not asking nobody to do nothing for me. I'd rather just move out of town around white people and, and and not have to deal with that. Now, granted, I go through racist shit like this where I go to a restaurant and niggas playing with my money. You get what I'm saying? But is it worth being safe? Of course. I'm, a, I'm up here uptown Atlanta getting treated like a, 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 a broke-ass nigga, but at least I'm safe. 
You feel me? I don't even get into all that. That's why I don't even do business with black men like that no more. Because black men love doing fucking each other over. I done got fucked over by three black men. I done did business with five black men. Two of them might turn out good. And then three of them turn out terrible. And I learned black men don't care about paperwork. They don't care about none of that shit. They'll really try you. And then I be seeing why a lot of us get killed. Because we just do the, the worst shit to each other. Like, nigga, if I paid you some money, do the fucking work. You get what I'm saying? Like, why are you running off? Why are you, why do you take the money and do differently than what we discussed? You get what I'm saying? And y'all, we just do the most whole shit to each other. And then that's why all this shit be happening. Because we don't got love and respect for each other like white people and Asians have. When they sign that paperwork, they follow through with that fucking paperwork. You feel me? Us, we gonna try to fuck each other over. We gonna try to goddamn run off. We gonna say, hey, bro, I really need this money, blah, blah, blah. I'll pay you back, I'll pay you back. And then don't pay the money back. Like, we just really, we really be on, on demon time. And then that just made me not even want to do nothing, like, with nobody no more. Because everybody is on demon time today. For some reason, in 2023, niggas on demon time. You, you give a nigga something, he gonna run off. I been ran off on, on by three niggas, bro. You feel me? And I say, you know what? Instead of resorting to the violence in the streets like I really want to, you get what I'm saying? Because when you, uh, you know what I'm saying? We come from an environment, you take something, you got to pay for that shit with your life. You get what I'm saying? Like, you you take a lot of money like that. You take 100 racks, 50 racks. Like, that's some, that, that'll that piss somebody off. I don't even want to go to court. That shit take three years. I want my shit back now. So what I said was, you know what? I'm going to let all that shit go because I make too much money to lose uh, you know, niggas, niggas gonna force you in the streets. Cause you don't wanna go to fucking court to ask a man for your money back. You like, nah, bro, I'ma pull up on you. Where my shit at? And then I realize you can't force a nigga to go out his pocket and give you nothing. So it's it's best to not even work with them no more. So I said, you know what? I ain't even gonna work with y'all no more. I'll take this loss. I don't want. I don't. I invested in five men. One man I invested in. I paid him twenty k. I made three three million. Another man I paid. I got for free. We made two hundred reps. So I was 3.2 million up on working with niggas, and I lost 300 racks. So I had to weigh out the odds. Cool. I made 3 million fucking with two men, and then lost 300 racks fucking with, with three. Cool. Am I going to fuck up the money I'm getting now to go try to get that? Nah, bro, you feel me? So I said, you know what? Cool. I'm going to take this loss, but I will never, ever invest into another black man again. You niggas got to come to me now. With the money up front, I will never invest in y'all niggas again. Cause y'all, I got done three. I ain't gonna say invest in y'all. A few. I gotta. I gotta really, really. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but the way I'm going about shit, you gotta work with me. Like you gotta be my cameraman. You gotta be this and that. But all this, hey bro, let's do business. Let's do this and that, man. Niggas so slime out here, bro. Like, and it's black man. We do it to each other. Well, all we gotta do is is, is think long term. We always thinking about short term. Why would you run off on your plug when you can keep making money with your plug? You get what I'm saying? Why would you... The Chinese man ain't gonna, ain't gonna run off on a, on a hair supplier because he want to keep getting supplied. If a nigga front him some hair for his store, he not gonna run off on him. The, the white man, he know not to run off on the next white man because he, he thinking about how he can take care of his family for 10 years. You feel me? He, he thinking about how he can how he can take care of his family for 10 years. A black man just want to finesse your ass right now and then move on with his life to the next place. That's the type of shit we do. That's why all these niggas getting called up for scams. Because everybody want right now money instead of doing the right thing. That's why that, That's why all them niggas who getting called out for no real estate scams are the way they are. Because black men, we have built a culture of wanting fast money. We have built a culture of wanting to fuck each other over to get instant gratification. I want a million dollars right now, so the easiest way I'm going to do it is going to fuck over my brother and sister. And then, now, ain't nothing worse than going up and then falling off. That's why a lot of you niggas fall off, because they don't do good business. You get what I'm saying? They go up and then they fall down. You feel me? Because they didn't keep it real from the jump. When you, when you build this shit on a lie... It's going to crumble one day. People going to figure it out. You get what I'm saying? People going to... You get what I'm saying? So, no. So, I'm one of the few niggas who took the, the, the long route and said, I'm going to do right by people so that I don't get called out later. You get what I'm saying? You got to always think about the future.
You feel me? So, I done got did wrong by certain men, bro, and that shit pissed me off. It, it hurt me to the core. It did. But I can't, but but at the end of the day, I'm still in profit. I made three million from two, lost 300 from, from three. So I said, you know what, cool, I will never do it again. I learned black men don't know how to do good business as far as influence. Now, can can you be my cameraman? Yes. Can you be my motherfucking uh, car detailer? Yes. But as far as investing into a man to try to build something for my brand, never again. Never again. The only man I'm investing in is myself. I'll never try to build another man like or, or work with another man as far as, hey, do this for, nah, fuck that. The only thing black men are good for is the shit they're good at, which is which is uh, saying, pull up, hey, come here. Tell them to come in person. If they ain't coming in person, don't do nothing online with no man, bro. You feel me? Yeah. Nah, they, no integrity, you feel me? So. Yeah, you got to be mindful. I ain't going to lie, like, I done fucked up a few times, but. They said, they said they can make the lamp sliders and the salmon and the finger. Excuse me. Okay. What's a good book for beginner traders? But it's just so sad because a lot of these men who are, are so capped on, on the internet, not who they say they are in person. You feel me? And at the end of the day, I said, you know, I'm going to take the loss on this. But certain niggas I'll never, ever fuck with again. You feel me? Nah, never lose again. I'll never lose again, but but believe it or not, y'all, I'm telling y'all this because even I take losses. The most money I ever lost was was working with other men, not the stock market. One man said he was gonna create an app for me. I'm 90k deep in the hole. I pay him 90,000 to create this app for me. This motherfucker said he was the best app developer. I let him butter me up, talk me to death, bro. I'm telling you, I can make this app for your brand blah 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 the app never worked and you know what this motherfucker told me to do he said this is what you do how about you put the app out and see and you know just put it out he was so desperate for money that he wanted me to put out an app that didn't work and i cussed his ass out i said bro i done came too far to scam my audience i said scamming is how niggas fall off you want me to you want me to tell people to pay for something that doesn't work I said, nigga, I'm never doing business with you. And you can keep that 90K. Fuck you. I'm never fucking with you niggas again. You, he really wanted me to sell my audience an app that didn't work. And I told him, bro, you got me fucked up. You want me to, you want me to, he created me a trading app that didn't work. And I said, you want me to just, just say this. And then you want me to get bad reviews on purpose? Are you stupid? So I lost that 90K. You feel me? So now... I'm looking for, I, I don't know who to trust. I lost 90K fucking with that nigga. It was another person I paid for advertisement slots. Swear, swear me up and down. Hey, bro, I pay him 100K for advertisement slots because he had a big YouTube following. So I ain't going to say who their names are. So I pay him 100 racks for an advertisement slot. So he ended up doing half the work. Butter me up, talk me to death, say, hey, bro. I said, bro, I'm not paying you the whole money up front because I already know what you niggas going to do. You going to run off. I said, I already done got ran off on the app, nigga, and another nigga, I ain't doing this. So he said, look, bro, I got you. So he did me a favor or whatnot, but it didn't make me money. And I said, listen, bro, if I pay you 100000 motherfucker, I want to make 150 to 200 k back. I don't want to break even or, or make half of it back. That's what I told him. I said, nigga, I don't care what your name is. The fuck, who you think you are? If I paid you 100 racks, nigga, make me 150 to 200 K back. That means put my advertisements in the right place at the right time. Why you playing with my money, nigga? You claim to be this, this whole whatever you think you are, and you not fucking delivering on what the hell you said you was going to deliver on. So you a hypocrite. And now I feel sorry for your fucking fans, because if I, if I go crazy and tell everybody who you are, it's gonna it's gonna look bad on your fucking name, cause I'm a real nigga and I'm and I'm paid. I don't got nothing to lose. I don't need you niggas. So that's what I told him. But I like, but it's cool. What I'ma stop doing is fucking with you niggas, bro. I said I'm so tired of you niggas thinking y'all can play with my money. 
I paid one dude, I paid, so I paid 90K to this nigga, the app didn't work. I paid 100K to this nigga, he gave me half the fucking work back. And it's just like, I'm like, what y'all nigga think this is? Y'all think this a circus? You feel me? Y'all think this shit a circus? Y'all think goddamn, you could, you could just play like that? So I said, I ain't doing no more business with niggas. Now granted, yeah, the dude, the dude, he made the app, but it didn't work. So all these dudes do have to work, but they never really fall through with it. It was one, and it's another nigga who who ran off on me. I paid one dude to for like three thousand to cut down my trees. He ain't finished the work, and I said, "Bro, what's up with niggas and not finishing and going?" This what this what black men to do. They will they will they will say, "Hey, I can do this," and they think they're worth this, right? So they all say, hey, I think I'm such and such because I read some fucking book and I saw some Instagram posts. So I'm going to charge this for it. So, you know, me as a black man who rich, I'm respecting niggas prices. I ain't asking for a discount as long as you return me my investment. So what black men to do is say, I'm worth five thousand and they're going to work up to two thousand dollars knowing they're not capable of this. But they're going to charge this. That go for food and everything. We gonna charge this, knowing we're not capable for it. We'll, we'll charge this for clothes. We'll charge this for services, all this shit. Knowing we're not capable, and we'll, and we'll do this work, this amount of work. Every time. Most, not 50, I would say 70% of black men work like that. Boom, but it ain't here. It's fucking here. So I decided to become the black man who gives you, who charges this and gives you this. Which most niggas don't got that business model. I charge little to give you a lot. I charge you fucking this to give you this. You get what I'm saying? Most black men hate hate doing that for some reason. They want to charge here and give you this. I charge here and give you this. You get what I'm saying? I charge low and give you a lot. You get what I'm saying? So and, and, until men start to work like that, bro, I ain't even doing business with niggas. You're not going to give me my ROI. Plus some, don't even, what's the point? What's the point of breaking even? What's the point of getting less or breaking even? I want all niggas to understand that. What's the point of giving people less for what you charge? What's the point of that? That shit, it kills me, but that's how we do it. That's how we do it. They said that model will beat out the competition. Of course. That's how Big Meech got rich. He came to Atlanta, sold better dope for a cheaper price. I came in the entrepreneurship game selling better dope for a cheaper price. Everybody's saying they can make money, but I'm charging $35, 125 to return you an investment. You feel me? Spit nothing but facts, but nah, I just had to get on the soapbox. That shit be for real, bro. I promote the fuck out of you because your book has enough value to help people make 500. That was up, bro. Thank you. Instagram about to kick me y'all because I've been on live for too long, but I spit a lot of games, so this is a good live to post. And I'm sure, Nick, and, and if somebody see this and they and the shoe fits, wear it. I don't care if a man get mad at me because you niggas shouldn't be out here scamming me or people and pretend to be something y'all not. Niggas claim to be the smartest men in the world but act stupid when the business comes. You get what I'm saying? But then get mad when the nigga get mad. Nah, don't get mad because I'm mad. Do the fucking business. And then if I start being a lame nigga and start shouting people's names, I'm going to be wrong. But, I don't, but my platform ain't built on drama. So I'll never cause drama and do all that beef and shit. And niggas know that. So I decided to stay away from it because they gonna use that to their advantage. Because they know I want beef and shout your name out, they gonna try to do lame shit on the low. So I said, I ain't fucking with people then. I fuck with these white folks until you niggas get it together. Well, well you get what I'm saying? I fuck with these white folks. I get more money with them anyways. I get way more money with white men. Keep it all in 1,000. Until, until we figure out to stop fucking each other over and doing stupid ass business, we gonna, we gonna have to move accordingly. You feel me?
Not all niggas. I still hire niggas, but some, a lot of you niggas piss me off. You got a 2K thing real.